This was fucking terrible. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. This movie was awful. Awful. <laughs> that's, like, that's like the only thing that I could say like right off the bat. This was awful. Absolutely terrible. And I was actually excited for this movie because it was shot not far from my house. No joke. Uh, I drove... Uh, to go to my grandmother's at some point in, in 2021 when, when the film was shot. And the entire street on my way to my grandma's was Ludlow, Maine. In 1969, we see all these old, you know, period, period cars, you know, and it very much looked like a much older town than it is. And so I was really excited uh, to see that on screen, you know, and some of my friends also worked on this movie. So obviously I have some respect for them. They worked tireless nights, tireless nights to make it happen. But, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. The prequel to the 2019 version of Pet Cemetery, uh, which was also a very bad movie, but this is far worse. Far worse. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, what I can say is that original. It does follow a younger Judd Crandall, but it's very distant from So, um, um, so that's one thing. But the, 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 most, the most abysmal thing about this movie is that it very much feels like, and it could have been a good thing if it really leaned into the camp, but it very much feels like a direct-to-VHS film that you would rent at the video store in the mid to late 1990s instead of an actual expansion of the world of Stephen King's book. You know, it doesn't explain any of what it presents. Actually, it relies on your knowledge of having seen the original before watching a prequel. And yet... The producers, they were talking about, oh yeah, we're going to really expand and explain the origins of the Pet cemetery. There's this flashback where we see white colonizers trying to appropriate the land of an indigenous tribe, but it's so brief that it has absolutely zero impact to the story at hand and only gives the origins, not of the Pet cemetery and of the sort of sp uh, spiritual type of um, um, hold it has to Ludlow, but the origins of the name of the town Ludlow, which is based after some white colonizer who died uh, or got resurrected by the cemetery. I don't know. I, I forgot. It was it was terrible. It was really, really, really poorly written and so underdeveloped. This whole thing is about this dude called Timmy, uh, who is the son of David Duchovny's character, who returned from the Vietnam War with a silver star, but no, actually died in the Vietnam War. His body was shipped to the U.S., and they buried his body in the pet cemetery, and then he came back to life, and then he just starts to kill a bunch of people. And, you know, that whole conceit could have worked if they progressively leaned into the fact that Timmy had died in Vietnam, right? But the very first scene of this movie is David Duchovny's character digging up Timmy's body, putting him in the pet cemetery, right? And seeing him resurrected. And so we ins instantly know that he resurrected his son from the dead. Whereas if that scene was not in the film and, you know, we would meet the inhabitants of Ludlow in a rather peaceful light and very slowly would see that something is wrong with Timmy you know, represented visually. And even the first time that we see him, something's a little off, but not too off, but, you know, uh, making a sort of distance from, well, he's back from Vietnam. He probably saw some really, really, really terrible stuff there. So we can understand why his behavior is a little erratic and a little, you know, a little disturbing to then slowly reveal that, no, he's dead. And he came back to life. And now he is deeply disturbed, right? Because... When they come back to life, they don't come back the same. You know, and sometimes dead is better. If that would have happened, you know, slowly, the film would have been infinitely better. 
so much better than what we had right now because immediately we know the big reveal. Immediately we know that this whole thing is essentially going to be about Timmy going on this killing spree and it's extremely fast-paced, way too frenetically paced that it blunts any of the action sequences, any of the tension, any of the dread that the director and the writer wants to set up. You know, it's it's so fucking fast-paced and too, you know, too in your face that it just, it feels so rushed and none of it, none of it, none of it works. None of it works. Um, the, the, the most insane thing about this film is he kills a, he kills a couple of people, Timmy. I'm not going to say who dies, but he kills a couple of people early on in the movie and they immediately get brought back to life like that, as if they're zombies instead of, you know, them being more psychologically active and corrupted uh, beings, you know, not zombies, but, you know, people that are fully alive but have experienced death that their minds get corrupted because they have seen what death is like. That is the core tenet, in my opinion, of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. And I, I'm, actually, I'm actually reading a Stephen King book right now. Night Shift. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Stephen King. I've read most of Stephen King's works. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the core idea, in my opinion, of Pet Cemetery is that. It is, you know, when they come back to life, they're not the same because they have seen death. They have seen unimaginable horrors within death. You know, they're not zombies. Zombies are just undead, you know. They, they have no proper discernment in their situation. They just want to eat human flesh. That's not what the, uh, the, the people that come back from the dead in a pet cemetery do, you know. That's not what... Uh, in this film and in the original film, the 2019 film, and I don't know if there's a 1989 film, but in the 2019 film, that's not what they do, right? Um, and so in this one, though, they just turn them into mindless zombies that can't be killed unless being shot in the eyes. I don't think that was the case in the original movie. I've seen, I, I saw a couple of days before I saw this one um, that they had to be shot in the eyes because now they're just purely zombies, you know? They they, 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 they they can only be killed in the eyes. If not, they just come back from the dead like zombies. But that wasn't the case in the 2019 movie. That, that, that they had to be killed in the eyes. So they turn this really interesting, you know, very, um, um, you know, very thoughtful meditation on, you know, what can we, you know, what death, what can we actually see within death? You know, what, you know, this meditation on death is what I wanted to say. It was like, it's like, what am I going to say? This meditation on death and on the afterlife, it turned that, what Stephen King wrote, into this just mindless horror flick with, you know, poorly edited action sequences, shoddily, you know, shabby, 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 shabby work from every single actor. I mean, they got, they got all B and C listers that comprise most of the cast. They are not very good. None of the actors are very good in this movie. The guy that plays Judd, I mean, you go from John Lithgow, who's like, you know, one of the great actors of our time, to this. He's just as flat as it comes. His line delivery is so bad. They, they still got Pam Greer, who does have the best line of the film. But that's because, you know, she is the queen of delivering lines. If you ever saw Foxy Brown, if you ever saw Coffee, you know, uh, these are films that, you know, when her lines would hit, it was like, yeah, fuck yeah. You go, you know, <laughs> it's like hell, hell to the yes, you know, and, and she has the best line in the film, you know, um, and David Duchovny as well. He just completely mails it in. He looks completely bored during the entire movie. And it's, it's a real shame because it could have worked had they fixed just a couple of things in this movie would have been great. But alas, it is a horrible film that only serves for Paramount to dilute intellectual properties into, um, you know, streaming content. And none of them, and, and no one will remember that this film ever came out, except the ones that watched it and went, yeah, it was bad. So, there you go. Terrible movie. Don't watch it. One of the worst horror films of the year. Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Uh, thank you all, guys, so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video. Uh, follow me on social media at Max with Beck, and I will talk to you guys later.